everyone, this is Miller, and welcome to another episode of Triple Threat Comics YouTube channel, or it's been known as the Triple Threat Comics Podcast. Tonight we actually have a very exciting episode with uh, two very good friends of mine from the Sierra Nova Comics platform. They're going to talk about their new Kickstarter, Mittens, Space Pilot, Issues 1 and 2. Please welcome the very talented Greg McEwen. I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. I apologize. <laughs> well, <Quinn. laughs> well, it's, it's fine. Thank you. Thank you. And our next guest is equally talented. Please welcome Josh J.R. Ellis. Hello. <laughs> welcome, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Very glad. I'm very glad you guys are coming. Um, we've been trying to get you on the show for quite a while now. Your schedule's never quite worked out. Yeah, because I was working overnights at first, but that changed. <laughs> it's all right. It is all right. <laughs> okay, we're here to talk about your very exciting project, uh, Kickstarter Space Pilot. Uh, first of all, this is a crazy crazy good idea we just show the uh, fans what we're, to what we're talking about and here we go now uh, i have to ask um what prompted you guys to come up with this idea uh so my girlfriend's childhood cat's name was mittens and um uh, when he died, there was a bunch of cats, like a lot of neighborhood cats showed up at her dad's house, like a <laughs> swarm of them. Kind of like the movie The Birds, like yeah. birds, but like with cats. <laughs> and, uh, but they weren't attacking the doors. And stuff. Well, maybe they were. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> They might have been, who knows? <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's like a mafia like funeral or a wedding or something. So I took that and I spun it and I made him like a space pilot, and uh, he's like working for the mob. For it's like one of his jobs that he's got. So issue two takes place right after issue one, and issue one is he has to retrieve this item. <clears throat> and the item is what he's holding on the cover right there. Wow. Uh, he doesn't know the actual power behind this item. He just thinks it's pretty useless. <laughs> he just thinks it's a squeaky toy. Yeah. yeah. And he's just like, this is what Oscar Paulton like wants. That's like the mob boss on Planet Yarn. Yeah. Uh, so he's like, this is literally what he wants. That's crazy. It's like just a squeaky toy. So uh, he's carrying that around. And then uh, issue two starts with his plane is crashed on a planet called Essos. Yeah. Um, he's never been on that planet, even though he has traveled to other planets. That's just one of the planets he hasn't been on. And uh, he runs across a couple people and different beings. Yeah. Um, and some of them are friends, some of them are foes. So you'll figure that out when you read it. Yeah. But he's got to get his shit fixed, and a bunch of craziness happens. Josh, I, I have to ask. Um... Did Greg uh, tell you that? Tell you this? Uh, did he pitch it to you, or did he tell you this, and you were immediately hooked and said, "I want to do this." It, he did pitch it to me. It was a couple years ago. He was like, "I want to do this sci-fi book, and it has a cat as a main character." And I was like, "Okay, this is interesting." And like, I kind of started doing some doodles, and uh, like, I don't know if you've ever read Calvin and Hobbes yeah. comic strips. Yeah. Uh, Spaceman Spiff is his like sci-fi imagination character that was like our starting point of like well what if he looks kind of like this and greg threw in a little like well let's try to do like a rocket raccoon look and then like we really started playing with it and and then like i started adding in some star fox elements and then greg was like i love star fox and then it was like one little nug of an idea greg had he threw it my way and then it just exploded and it was great <laughs> yeah just look at the concept art it's just fantastic i mean wow thank you <laughs> Well, I, gosh, I always knew you were a talented uh, artist, just like Greg is a talented writer. I always knew that. Yeah, but to see you guys come together quite like this, it, it's just 
which is fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, I I think what's really great is like I, I'm really glad that Greg just kind of like threw an idea together, and he just is like, you know, let's let's just kind of go for it, and then and then we would sit down and just start like shooting ideas out, and uh, he kind of had like a nice framework of like three issues, and then we started adding some meat to it, and I I, I mentioned like oh like. We could use like uh, Ducktales as some inspiration for some of these duck characters, which is just a great one to one, yeah. and uh, and just you know pull from our our like childhood inspirations and just kind of blend it together and have fun with it. Well, it it certainly has worked out because I'm seeing a lot of you know the various you know the, the characters that you talked about you know in this one thing, and it it works. It, it totally works. I even like the color scheme that you have here. It's a, very muted, it's a very muted palette, you know, and it really works. It really, you know, adds depth. And this is what gets me excited about these type of comics, you know, is yeah. attention to detail, attention to depth, even the coloring. That's uh, like my big thing as far as, as, far as the art goes. I, I really like dive into like making sure that the coloring is speaking as much as like the the line art the inking is and uh and and greg we we were talking about like okay what can we can we do color no that color is kind of expensive well let's do black and white and i was like i want to do black and white but i don't want to do black and white <laughs> uh and so that was the idea of like we'll do black and white but we'll just do it a monotone color yeah. and monochromatic and and we tried the blue out and it just, it just worked like immediately. And so we just got kind of hooked on it. Yeah. It, 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 and like I said, it totally works. And, you know, it creates also a uniqueness, you know, that you don't really see in comics anymore, you know, because when you take one look at this and you're like, you know exactly what it is. Because everyone else kind of looks kind of generic about the same and all that stuff. Uh, when you look at this, you know you yeah. did, and you know what it is. I I appreciate that, and I, I think that that was kind of a, a like how can we stand apart, you know, from all these sci-fi comics. And I think, let alone having like a cat for a main character, the very like anthropomorphic kind of character set, but then also doing the blue tones, making it kind of like a Star Wars, Star Fox inspired thing. Like it was just kind of a perfect storm of like these very unique elements. Wow, uh, it doesn't feel like we tried very hard to get there either. Like it just kind of naturally kind of grew into itself, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it did. It did. Yeah, uh, I love I love the I love the uh, designs of these the vehicles and all that. All the top shot at this page that we're looking at right now is it just tells you a lot. I'm I'm obsessed with vehicles. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, it's technology's always been something I love to draw. It's just yeah. so much fun. And Greg just lets me ha have at it. Like, you know, he'll tell me when he doesn't like something, but I pretty much just dive head first into like, this is what I'm thinking. This is where my inspirations are, and he's like, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember when I was when uh, we were doing Progress Horror Issue Two, and one of the comics that I did, which was a card comic, he just let me go wild with a card design. It's so nice. <laughs> Yeah. It, 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 we appreciate it so much. <laughs> yeah. I know there's people that don't do that. So. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, it looks like you got some great you know, rewards here. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a Journey Bar sticker, and yeah. that's um, based on a candy bar that's within our universe, oh. and it's in the second issue. Um the slugger character is eating it. He's kind of like a Paul Blart almost. <laughs> so he's like <laughs> such a good analogy. <laughs> so he's like he's got to get some energy, so he eats a candy bar. Oh my god! Yeah, it's act. I really like issue two a little more than one, just because there's more characters and he his like mittens like catitude can actually like play off of other people. Well, it's always the same with uh, any new series because with issue one, you're just establishing the story, you know, a little bit about the main character, some of the supporting cast, but 
you know, with issue two, you can expand and say, okay, let's go even further. See what's going to happen in the story, meet these other characters. So, yeah, there's a reason why you like issue two better because you were able to expand more. Yeah. <laughs> I love this uh, Nintendo 64 parody art print here. Uh, yeah. That's very clever. Yeah, uh, we really like dive into the nostalgia factor <laughs> with this comic. Um, we even had we brought back the uh, one from the first issue. Yeah, which is that one. Ooh. Um, <laughs> so that's on a new reward. It's called '90s Throwback, yeah. and it's also an add-on, so you could just get that art print as an add-on. And don't you wish that they actually had the, this type of video game back in the '90s, folks? Don't you wish that? I do, because I would have played the hell out of it. <laughs> I could see it as a video game. Oh, video game, uh, animated series, uh, a whole franchise. <laughs> oh, absolutely. absolutely. The potential. <laughs> ah, here's the nice throwback that you're talking about. That has uh, obviously both prints, physical copies of issues one and two, and Mittens and Slugger trading cards. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Mittens trading card was from the first issue uh, campaign last year, and we didn't offer it for this one because we wanted Slugger to be kind of the main contender, but yeah. we unlocked the stretch goal, and we're like, all right, we're bringing the, bringing the Mittens back. And I'm pretty sure I have more of those cards, and if I don't, like, they're not that much money to print anyway. So. Definitely. I guess I got Pug Noises t-shirt. Nice. <laughs> Nobody has asked me about that yet. So. I'm really surprised, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> what is that about? <laughs> so, yes, I can finally do it. So, <laughs> so when Slugger is talking, because he's a pug. Yeah. Part pug, part cyborg. Uh, when he's talking, he ta he says something, and then he, it says pug noises. And it says that, like, as the lettering. Like, oh, cool. in the book. But when somebody... Is like what is pug noises? Is <laughs> it's just it's just that. <laughs> so just imagine him saying, "I am sensitive about my weight," and then man's like, "Tell tell that to your stomach." And then <laughs> <laughs> I, I think angry pug noises is one of them. Like there's there's a lot of variations to the pug noises he makes. <laughs> there's a pug snarl, which after that yeah. after that little combo, that is what is actually said. Oh, I remember that quote because well i wrote it but <laughs> <laughs> that that helps. <laughs> um i posted that page today on facebook when i was uh, on break or whatever at work oh <sighs> uh, yeah we actually kind of went back and forth about like in the lettering do we like make like a snarl like onomatopoeia sound effect yeah and then uh, and then we were i think we just kind of came to that realization like no just pug noises like <laughs> It just works. <laughs> it's simple. It's simple. Keep it simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that translates kind of weird. Like, how do we like that snarl noise? How do we turn that into like lettering? <laughs> yeah. yeah, because it would set yourself up for a complication that you didn't think about. And then at some point you're like, you know what? How can I make this simple? Wait a second. This is how I make it simple. Yeah. And it, simple. Probably, it totally works. Yeah. It totally works. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. <laughs> it's so fluffy, plushy. <laughs> it's so fluffy. Okay. Yeah, I have fun with the names. <laughs> yes. The mittens plushy, not pictured, obviously, but uh, interesting, interesting idea. It's actually pretty crazy that there's three that are already bought, and it's not even pictured in that yet. So, and there's only five. So, so if the other two get bought, then that's cool. But like, if they don't get bought, I'm still gonna like bring them to the conventions, and maybe somebody will buy one. Yeah, because Pretty sure they will. Yeah, because it's also that track you know people to your table, and also say, well, where, where, where's this character from? Yeah, yeah. it's like here's the book. <laughs> yeah, I don't even have to pitch the comic, even though all I have to do is you like cats, and they're like, yeah, and then they like look through the comic and. Then, <laughs> Just here's, hand it to him. Here's all of my wallet. And then I'm like, oh, okay. This has a social security card in it. But I, don't <laughs> I don't need that, but I mean. 
Well, the minute you you use the word uh, plushy, people are just like, okay, we have to see what this is about. Yeah, and uh, the comic creator Carissa Grant, she actually like gave like gave me the contact she uses for her plushies for her uh, comic series Redemption, Worthy Chaos, or whatever. And uh, yeah, so. I reached out to that person, and then they told me the price. I was like, "That's actually not a lot of money." So, uh, yeah. So I, I got five, or I'm going to get five. They're like, she's literally making it. Um, I'm gonna actually put a picture up when it's like enough progress. Yeah. And then I'll be like, "Fuck, it's real." <laughs> it's not fake, no, it's not fake. Wow. <laughs> it's, this isn't a fake thing. Well, some of the progress photos of just like the material itself she's using and stuff. It, I think it's gonna look really good. I'm yeah. excited to see a full thing. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen what the eyes will look like because um, I think it takes a week or something. So like this week, I think, or next week, she'll have the eyes on there. Um, I know what the nose looks like oh. and just the fabric of like what it looks like. It's just like a nose with a little cat smile. Yeah, <laughs> I think. <laughs> It's gonna be super cute, I think. Yeah, I think it's gonna be your one of your biggest sellers. I'm like, if I'm being honest, because people do like plushies. They, they were like one of the first things bought, like when the Kickstarter went live. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I know what I'm gonna do on the next campaign. <laughs> yeah. yeah think- actually, there is a there's a Brenda girl that like always. <clears throat> um, comments on anything i share of mittens and says mittens or whatever and uh she she said something about you should have like every campaign you should just have another plushie and i was like i can do that like it's not like that difficult to do like i, I could do the griff character next like that would be awesome oh, I, like, panda, panda? oh i yeah. love that idea a panda and then he would have a little bamboo staff or something like, yeah that'd be awesome all right well we already need to do that <laughs> <laughs> it's decided <laughs> You see, folks, anytime that people come on my on my show, they usually get, get ideas, you know, from just to talk to me, you know, just from talking to me. So, obviously, it's between themselves, but they usually get ideas from when I'm on my show. So, I really you're the mastermind really, behind it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also love this, uh, this sketch uh, cover. I also like this as well. That one uh, did pretty well last year. I think we had a couple of them. Right. And- Two or three or something. Yeah, I, I think you we already have out, three. So. Oh yeah, I did. I think there were two. Oh, I, don't, I, don't I think know. there was two out of four. And oh, uh, wow, there's four already. We oh, already really? have four of these. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. So there's so one have, of those left. We only have um, one left of the sketch covers. Yeah, Sweet. I, I look at the Kickstarter more on my phone than on like my computer. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm not keeping up on some of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do an update today because I haven't done that yet. And it's been almost a week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or oh, I could just wait till the week, but yeah. But yeah, we the did, we did hit our first stretch goal, so we did. Yes. We were having fun with the uh, uh, N64. Co- like we went through like a bunch of covers of video games of N64 video games, and we're like. What do we do? Like Star Fox was easy. That was straightforward. But like, where did we go from there? And and uh, we realized that there's a really cool fight scene in this issue where Mittens and the uh, he's like fighting up against like a bunch of prison guards. Yeah. And like we're like, oh, Smash Bros. They're all like punching and kicking. And I'm like, that's perfect. <laughs> so that was just so easy to do. <laughs> easy when you know how. Yeah. Well, yeah. And so we're doing. Um, for the the next uh, expansion goal, the next stretch goal we have is going to be, uh, was it Diddy Kong yeah, Racing? Diddy Kong Racing. We're going to be doing the Diddy Kong Racing um, parody, I guess you could say. I got, I'll be working on that tomorrow. Okay. Because uh, we are coming up on that stretch goal pretty quickly. <laughs> is that what you're going to be drawing on Thursday? Thursday, yep. Live stream, if if not sooner. <laughs> wow, these are definitely great uh, add-ons. Uh... If you guys haven't actually uh, purchased the book as well as the add-ons, I do that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, 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 just between us. Just between us. And the trading card set is not the same trading cards that you've seen. The trading uh, card set is a parody because 
we just keep doing parody stuff. Uh, Pokemon parody trading card game. So here we're, we take like Mittens and Slugger and uh, the other character, the other new character Cosmo, and yeah. a couple other characters. And we're even gonna have like energy cards, like the Journey Bar is gonna be an energy card, and uh, that's gonna be like a little Pokemon uh, trading card game kind of thing. And that, that's gonna go to like the higher tier backers, so like the plushy people. And stuff like that. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Okay, let's actually see how you guys are actually doing on the Kickstarter. I got a dog. You're doing pretty damn well. <laughs> yeah. Seven backers, 25 days to go. You already raised $2,313. Yeah. And when did you guys start? Uh, The 20th. Yeah. Five, day, five days ago, yeah. 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 It, we well we funded it was pretty much right on the 24 hour mark we already hit yeah. our funding uh, someone, at least for the initial goal <laughs> yeah because somebody uh grabbed the retailer tier and i was like that's fine <laughs> oh that put us over didn't it yeah, yeah. And i was yeah. like oh cool it made it happen <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like that's 16 books you're getting they're like yeah i was like okay <laughs> like i'll hand them out for like halloween presents or something. I was like, oh, okay, just trick or treat. Here's a comic. <laughs> Here's a comic about cats and dogs yeah. and ducks. <laughs> yeah. Instead, of Kenny, we're going to give you a comic book. Enjoy it. Isn't the chocolate? Well, there's chocolate in the comic. Yes. <laughs> but you can't eat it. But you can't eat it. You can't eat the comic. It's not edible. I mean, anything's anything's edible, really. Well, I guess. Well, <laughs> This one will make you sick faster. Let's just say that. <laughs> That's fair. Sick, but this will make you sick faster. <laughs> so avoid that one, please. Yes, please do. Oh, man. <laughs> like a kid starts eating it, and it's like, oh, my God, I'm like a printer, and then just paper keeps coming in. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shitty ah, shitty paper cut. <laughs> the, mental, uh... the mental picture. Hey, that promise you just told us to cartoonist, so now we got this image. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. We're immediately picturing it. <laughs> I am very sorry, folks. <laughs> Thanks, Trey. Trey, not inserted. <clears throat> it's like a receipt printer out the butt. <laughs> oh, that's a dumb joke. <laughs> uh, the classics. <laughs> Okay, so that's uh, right now for mid space pilot, and you still got 25 days to go. I'm very excited for you guys on that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I have to ask, though, uh, this question Do you see this as a limited series, or do you think it might go on a bit further? <laughs> so, a couple months ago, I thought it was only going to be three issues. Uh, well, it was going to be three issues for this arc, and then we were going to just do another three, and then that was probably it. Yeah. Then we started talking about something, and then it just blew up, and now we, uh, we, we're we going to have like a whole Mittens verse of stuff. So there's this arc, and then there's going to be uh, one shot, and then there's going to be another arc, and then there's going to be a one shot, and then there's going to be another arc. So yeah, <laughs> it was, there's a lot more coming. <laughs> This is what is this is what is exciting. Yeah. This is pretty exciting, folks, because you're getting some of the inside uh, details on if there's going to be, you know, more to the story, more to the series, and you just got the answer. It's it's going to be really cool too, because like the way that we're going to be doing these one shots, like after the arc is done, the three issue arc, there's yeah. going to be a, a one shot that kind of kind of helps set up the next arc. Um, and so it really is. It's uh, it's essentially like the the like the one point five like arc one point five because like you could probably read the next arc and it'd be fine without reading it, but like it will help give some backstory to characters and set up some some character development um, and just kind of make the whole arc better. Yeah, and we already know how the second arc ends. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't write it, but I I, I know and I remember that. <laughs> I remember my brain. <laughs> I have to uh, write uh, issue three, though, 
Okay. Well, it is written, but like we changed a couple of things, so now I have to edit a couple things and move things around. Yeah, that's another thing uh, for all you up and coming comic readers, you know, write, rewrite, anything, make it better, you know, make it relatable to your audience. And you have to know your audience. And these guys know their audience. For this, seems, one, to, seems to be. <laughs> Yeah. So, so after uh, Bitten's, uh, this Kickstarter has ended, uh, do you guys have any other projects that you're going to be uh, working on? Josh does. Yeah, I got uh, Astronaut High Schooler, um, issue two, technically. I did issue one a couple years ago. I didn't even kickstart it. It was just like a project I put out. It was like right when the pandemic hit. Oh. And uh, I put it out. It did pretty well, you know, for a, a non Kickstarter release. Um, but then I've been working with Lucky Thirty Three Comics, uh, and we've been we've been working on a bunch of books together. And they they were interested in picking up Astro High Schooler and putting out that uh, hopefully mid August, um, mid to late August is what we're shooting for. Uh, it's going to be uh, issues one and two, kind of like what we're doing doing with Mittens, um, uh, but this one will include both uh, issues and. Uh, it's <laughs> it's it's really it's like a, a monster of the week situation um, where issue one obviously it's spelled right out on the cover issue one yeah. space pirates uh, issue two giant monsters and uh, high schooler is the character of astronaut high schooler is fun because like they're just like this random like superhero that like just showed up at this place called Earth City it's like the most like generic on generic things. And uh, they just have like these crazy superpowers and uh, a baseball bat, and they fight evil. <laughs> oh man, I love the concept. Yeah, just the concept alone it sounds exciting. And <laughs> just having so many, you know, genres in this book again, I think fans are gonna love it. And you said issue one was already out. I'm guessing this is on the Sierra Nova platform. It yes. is. That's right. Uh -huh. so, yeah. yeah. If you would like to read that one, it is on Sierra Nova. Um, it's a 20, I want to say a 22 page, 24 page. Uh, it's essentially like a bit of a, a bit of a establishing the world, establishing high schooler. Um, there's no side characters. It's just like Astro High Schooler fights some space pirates, nice and straightforward. And uh, in issue two that we're going to be doing, um, we've been in production for a little while now. Uh, this, this next one is going to be like, you have like a number of side characters come in. It, it's, it's actually, it's a lot like what we're talking about with Mittens is uh, Mittens it's, number two introduces a whole bunch of characters. I'm, we're kind of doing the same thing with Astronaut High Schooler and uh, fleshing the world out a little bit and, and starting to set up. We have, uh, God, I think like 10 issues planned for the, for Astronaut High Schooler total. Um, it's going to be a big series, but there's going to be kind of like Mittens again. There's going to be smaller arcs kind of connecting everything together. So it's going to be pretty fun. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. This is kind of this sounds exciting. Yeah, anything oh, yeah. wacky, bombastic. Uh, if you guys ever watch Fooly Cooly, yeah. um, uh, it's what I usually tell people is like it's like a high schooler version of Powerpuff Girls, essentially. You know, it's it's like actually in a really fun element to Astronaut High Schooler uh, as a series. The city of Earth City um, actually has like a reset timer. So, like, when the city gets destroyed or partially destroyed in the battle, a timer will physically appear above the city, and they'll say, like, Earth City will respawn in, and then there's, like, a timer. That's awesome. And then everybody, like, like places nice. bets and stuff. It's, yes, it's kind of got that, like, time of, you know, time is of the essence. And uh, and then, uh, but the, the trick in, in uh, issue two is that um, high schooler saves a day, you know, it's fine, but then when, like, a weird unknown threat shows up and the city gets like wasted and it says like it's going to take like two days for it to respawn and everybody's like getting mad and stuff and so it's like you start to introduce like what if what if your status quo kind of starts to shift off balance a little bit yeah it's, it's wild <laughs> and it's uh it's funny too because like where I got the idea was literally my wife was playing a mobile game and it said like, you know, you had to, you had to do some sort of like task 
and then you weren't able to do that task again for like 19 hours or whatever. And I was like, oh, what if, what if the the, the like the the city didn't respond for another 19 hours after it gets destroyed? And like that just it started to click in the kind of in the place. That's cool. Find inspiration everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Got to keep your mind open. <laughs> mind open. I don't think. I let that, let me show everyone at Sierra Nova Kai's the platform. Let's do it. Now this is where some of the excitement really is, folks. I have worked with some of the very, very talented people on this platform, and this is where it all happens. This is where you can have access to unlimited indie comics. Oh, look, there's been Fitness Issue 1. How about that? Oh, dang. Oh, no. They figured us out. <laughs> the whole yeah. thing's ruined now. <laughs> yeah, this oh, uh, this has uh, this website has got a lot of great things on it. It not only has access to some of the indie comics on here, also some of the merchandising from each of the comics. For example, this triple threat comics t shirt I'm currently wearing for Codename Hunter and Soul Racer, or just uh, stickers from some of these other uh, great things. Is the stickers for Mittens on here? No, those aren't on there. Oh, because shit. the stickers are from Sticker Mule, so I have to like set it up through Printify. Uh, yeah, I didn't even think of doing that. Wow. I do have stickers here, but <laughs> still have two in the same. <laughs> yeah. I think there's almost 100 comics on there. <laughs> Oh, man. Wow, that's maybe, awesome. Maybe your comic will be 100. Mm -hmm. close to Peter's comic was... Oh, wait, maybe there is on. Oh, no, I don't think there's actually 100 yet. Because yeah. when you delete a flip book, it still shows the number is rising, even though it's not. Gosh, I... That doesn't make any sense. That Halloween mug was uh, made by Josh, actually. Wow. Uh, nobody bought it but you know maybe one day <laughs> how could you not buy this fantastic mug there's a there's a hoodie with the same design um oh, man. we're what what we're doing because i told dylan like nobody's gonna buy our logo stuff because they don't know who we are um <clears throat> besides you know the 79 people back at mittens yeah. um they well, they probably want like character shirts or something so yeah. like and I, that's what I've seen other people do, like indie creators. They have characters on their shirts or whatever, like Ace Blade or whatever, like that. So <clears throat> that's what we're going to do. We just have to get going on that. <laughs> There's a Chronicles of Horror poster from the first one. Yeah, that was a good poster. Yeah, it's very cool. Ink 1 and Ink 2 Physical will be on there at some point, too. <laughs> Update. Was it a Bobby T shirt? Yeah, that's a Bobby T shirt. <laughs> Was that issue two? Yeah, that's issue two. Yeah, that was a good one. Doesn't work. That was a fun story. Yeah. Oh yeah. You have Codename Hunter on there that yeah. people can buy. Uh, yeah, I have to like tell people. Or, Remind them, like, yeah, you can actually like, use our link too. Yeah. <clears throat> there's a Jim of Comics mug, and oh, there's a Blanca Harms poster, poster in there. Heck yeah. There's a Buttercat sticker, even though we don't do that podcast anymore. But... It's such a good logo, though. <laughs> yeah. It is. It is a good logo. Yeah. I want that sticker. <laughs> uh, Hector made that logo. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was for breakfast talk, because we did like so much podcasting and stuff like that, yeah. like a year or two years ago or whatever. And then we, our lives changed forever. So the Fire Nation attack. You know, you just can't, you can't help it. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> well, the grave sticker, uh, the grave digger sticker. That was nice. Yeah, that one's cool. 
there is a it, it's not on here but the vhs like tape sticker um yeah. that was way too small like printed way too small and i'm like well i'm not getting these reprinted yet so like i sent them out for the issue too and it was like i'm like well oh, you can barely see it <laughs> I put so much work into that sticker and it looked so cool. And when when I got it, I was like, oh no. Like, oh, that size is wrong. So when we do issue three, which is technically not called Chronicles of Horror, it's called something else. Uh, we're going to have that sticker again, but it's going to be bigger. So like you can actually see what it says and stuff like that. Yeah, because uh, hopefully that sells because that should be something that we should own. Because it's a yeah. very well designed uh, sticker. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, I wish I had more info about the third one, but. All in good time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Like, if somebody wants to, like, just oh, I love these. give me drywall and installation, then, you know, I'll be done with my house. <laughs> Oh, gee, I was like, where are you going with this? <laughs> How do you use that to make a comic? <laughs> well, first you... <laughs> oh, I um, let me pull out my notebook. I'm curious. <laughs> right there. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Always thinking. Sorry, uh, that, that Mittens mouse pad, that was only available by uh, like a contest that we were doing. Pretty okay. sure. And... Uh, I think it was just a contest and mm -hmm. uh rodney fike he's actually part of haslam productions and he's actually on our platform too he just recently joined um like a month or two ago uh <laughs> he actually took a picture holding it and it is huge it's like isn't it's it big. like isn't uh, it like some yeah. like ridiculous size his, his cat lays on it like <laughs> it's, it is big and I was like, it is oh, so wow. not that and size. That's the, that and that's the only size that it comes in. So I was like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> like, who? Want... You, you, you don't think it's that big, even by that picture. But like, yeah, it's pretty big. Wow. Yeah. And uh, we have that Munch Munch hoodie on there, which yeah. I think there is also a shirt, which is the same thing. Um, we do a lot of food that's, stuff with mittens. Yeah, that's the <laughs> that's from the first campaign, not the hoodie, but the um, yeah. shirt. If we did it in the fall, then we would have a hoodie because I'm not going to sell somebody a hoodie in the summertime. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. well, this is quite something, and here are the actual the books themselves. Well. Here's the categories of the books. Hey, look, that's my high school. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's where you can find it. Only at ZeroNolaComics.com. Okay, yeah. so we're in, uh, huh. issues one and two of Crown as far as well as some of these other great comics. Chicago 21. Yes, Chicago 21. Or Chicago 20, not Chicago 21. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, I, I got Chicago 20, Bus Stop 21, and Station 22 are that series, but those other ones aren't done yet. There's a lot of goodies on here. Oh, hey, look, more of my stuff. <laughs> That's a lot. I, I'm not productive. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I love that. Love that pumpkin cover. That's so good. Yeah. That's Joseph Duez. That's beautiful. Yeah. The night he was carved. God. That's a, like, oh man, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the parody right there. Oh yeah, straight up. Uh, right. He came home. That's so clever. So speaking of uh, parodies and stuff still, um, we, yeah, we did a poll on Instagram and Facebook like yesterday or two days ago and uh i'm still like waiting for more people to do it even though like that's the most engaged post that i've had in a while uh and we have four different movie covers that like people are trying to choose from so this is what we want our next cover to be it's either uh the first one is uh blade runner 
The second one is um, Dune. Dune, which I kind of wanted as the cover, but like nobody's really picking that one. Um, yeah, no, it's kind of sad. <laughs> the third one is Ikira, uh, and the fourth is Aliens because Davey, that was on our live stream when we launched, he mentioned Aliens, and I was like, I've never seen that movie. I've seen Alien. So, sure. And I can just picture, like, Mittens is holding a tuna sandwich instead of, like, you know, <laughs> Always the tuna sandwich. Yeah. Oh, that would be so rich. That would be so rich. Yeah. Oh, we had a idea during our live stream, too, was uh, at some point for some stretch goal, we're going to have an ash can. <clears throat> and it's going to be how to, like, it's like a recipe for the perfect tuna sandwich or something. And Mittens is going to, like, try to find that. And Josh is thinking kind of like Indiana Jones in a way. Yeah. I think it could make a really fun little adventure book. I have to write it, but, you know, it, it won't take that long. I had an idea, but it's not the idea that we're going to do. <laughs> yeah, no, your idea was an avant-garde uh, student film-esque where it's you really question the concept of a tuna sandwich. <laughs> I still remember what it is. <laughs> okay, I do have to say this though. If you do decide to, to do this storyline, which sounds like epic, please make it a chase uh, story. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm because yeah, you know the good guys have the the, the tuna sandwich, then the bad guys have it, and the good guys have it. You know, stuff like that. That would actually be a lot of fun of him just to, like trying to track it down, and it keeps like switching hands. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fun idea. I think we're thinking like eight page, eight page story. Yeah. So that would be like a really fun little romp that he would go on. <laughs> and it actually connects back to the first issue by accident. Um, so it, the people that got the flash drive reward um, Oscar's flash drive yeah. from the first campaign. One of the things we added on there that Josh made was like the perfect like tuna sandwich like recipe thing, and it was like a blueprint for the perfect tuna sandwich. And now it's on the flash drive. So if anybody, anyone that has that flash drive, technically that connects to that. So wow. we're just being super meta by accident. <laughs> Full circle. Full circle. <laughs> Okay, uh, like I said, folks, uh, please check out SierraNovaComics.com. You get so many great content in here, so many great comics, very talented artists and writers, as well as these guys. And so much merchandise in here. You know, you got T-shirts, you got hoodies, you got stickers, you got coffee mugs. Seriously, take advantage of it. Yeah. If you need to know exactly where to go, the link is scrolling. On the bottom of the video. And uh, you can join Nova Nation because people should need to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you can join for free. Uh, you can join as a paying customer, which is four ninety nine. So that's the cost of a comic book, and you get all these comics and then discounts on merchandise and a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. So join today. And of course, check out uh, Mid Space Pilot issues one and two on Kickstarter. Link is also on the bottom. The campaign is 25 days to go, so you still have time to get all this good stuff. Guys, I can't tell you how uh, grateful I am that you guys actually came on here to talk about this epic project. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. I, I know I keep seeing like Triple Fit uh, always having an episode out and stuff. I'm like, all right, one of these days. <laughs> well, you guys been on my shit show. I know that. You know, you can say I was on Triple Threat Comics YouTube channel. I'll check it off my my to do <laughs> list for the year. <laughs> Hope you guys come back, though. Hope you guys come back. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, you know it. Yeah. Okay, I think this is pretty much a good place uh, to end our show, but before we do go, 
I'd like to uh, announce a new episode coming out on the 28th with a very, very new uh, guest of ours. And this is Nicole Kane, who is the creator of Fox and the Hound. She comes all the way from Sydney, Australia. So I'm very excited to have her on. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So cool. They follow us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm very excited uh, that she's coming on. Uh, she, she's very excited. So it's going to be a great show. And I also want to give a shout out uh, to the people behind Stella Land's Kickstarter. You guys have been gotten fully funded. Congratulations. I can't wait to see where you guys go with the next issue. Nice. And on, the, on that note, Greg, Josh, thank you again for coming on. Oh, thanks for having us. Thank you. And this has been a Triple Threat Comics YouTube channel for Triple Threat Comics podcast. I'm Ian Miller. You stay classy, folks. <laughs> also, be sure to actually follow us on our social media accounts, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And if you'd like to follow us on YouTube, just hit that like button and subscribe.